Welcome everyone to this module on writing essentials. In this series of mechanics of writing, this is lecture number three. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the usage of semicolon, colon, and dashes. So we are going to discuss on the usage or how to use semicolons and what are the many uses of colons and also the particular usage of dashes. Comma, semicolon, colon and dashes. Generally, they show a pause or a break of thought in a sentence. But each one of them have different usage. Semicolons are used to separate independent clauses. Colons are different. They can start a list or they can call attention of readers to themselves, stating that what is to follow is important. Dashes are versatile and they generally introduce some different idea to what is going on up to that point in a sentence. So they do also call attention of the reader to themselves. Let's begin with trying to understand semicolons. Semicolons main use is to separate independent clauses. We use a semicolon to separate independent clauses joined together without any conjunction. Let's look at these sentences to understand it. I chose Benny as my partner. We are an undefeatable team. In this sentence, we have two clauses. I chose Benny as my partner. We are an undefeatable team. And both of them are independent clauses. We also observe that both of these independent clauses are not joined with a conjunction. So in such case, where we are writing two independent clauses in a sentence and without a conjunction, a semicolon is used to separate each of them. Look at the other two examples. Kiara cooked dinner. I bought the groceries. Kiara cooked dinner. I bought groceries. Both of them are independent clauses and without a conjunction joining them. So to separate such clauses, we use the semicolon. You worked hard for this. Your reward is well deserved. Again, a semicolon is separating two independent clauses. We use a semicolon to separate independent clauses that may contain commas in between, even if the clauses are joined by a conjunction. For example, Danny likes doing bench presses, arm curls, leg extensions, and other weight training exercises. But Jen prefers cardiovascular training. Now in this long sentence, we have two clauses. Danny likes doing bench presses, arm curls, legs, leg extensions, and other weight training exercises. And the second clause is, Jen prefers cardiovascular training. Though both of them are joined together by the conjunction but, we still are using semicolon after the first clause because there are many items in the first clause separated by commas. So to identify and to delineate that this is the end of the first clause, here we are using a semicolon. To separate it.
Let's also look at some other uses of the semicolon. We use a semicolon to separate independent clauses connected with a conjunctive adverb that expresses a relationship between the clauses. Sometimes, not only conjunctions are used to join independent clauses, but also conjunctive adverbs like however, therefore, then, thus, and so on are used to connect two independent clauses. In such case, the first independent clause is followed always by a semicolon. And then we write the conjunctive adverb like however, therefore, and this particular adverb is followed by comma. Let's look at an example to understand this. I lost my job, therefore, I had to cancel my trip to Europe. Here we have two independent clauses. I lost my job. I had to cancel my trip to Europe. And the conjunctive adverb, therefore, actually expresses a relationship between the two clauses. If we observe carefully, since it's not a conjunction like but or and, and it's an adverb, we separate the first clause from the second clause using a semicolon. After the conjuncting adverb, we generally use a comma to identify it. No man wanted to spend four months living abroad. However, he couldn't get a visa that let him stay more than three months. Again, two independent clauses joined by a conjunctive adverb. And the first clause in such a case is separated from the second one by the usage of a semicolon. Now, there are many conjunctive adverbs that go like this. Some of them are accordingly, however, then, besides, instead, therefore, consequently, moreover, thus, furthermore, nevertheless, hence, and otherwise. So, we have now understood that there could be two ways of actually uh, joining independent clauses. The first method would be like uh, using a conjunctive adverb. In this case, my paycheck was late, therefore I couldn't pay my rent on time. We, ha we have used a conjunctive adverb, therefore, and the two clauses are separated by a semicolon. It could also be written by using a conjunction like because. I couldn't pay my rent on time because my paycheck was late. Whenever we use a conjunction like because, we do not use the semicolon to separate the two clauses. Semicolons can also be used to separate items in a series or in a list. Now, we use a semicolon to separate items in a series that contain commas because this helps the reader to see which set of items go together. Unlike items in a series separated by commas, a semicolon is used even when there is a conjunction. So, if there is no conjunction, we generally use commas to separate the items in a series. Even if there are items in a series separated by commas, a semicolon is used even when there is a conjunction. Let's look at an example to understand this. The possible dates for the annual day are Thursday, June 5th, Saturday, June 7th, Sunday, June 8th, or Monday, June 9th. Now, in this case, a case there are a series of items items in a series now the possible dates are like june 5 thursday saturday june 7 or june 8 sunday or june 9 Mon june 9 monday now each of the days are separated by commas whereas because the day and the date they are one item and which already has a comma in between now to separate it with another item, 
which has a comma inside it we use semicolon so semicolons are very essential to separate items in a series which already consist of commas in them another example will clear us of our doubts on our team you will find the hustlers jake and money the slackers henry chintu and kareem and the easy going people jill rob and kiran now here you observe that the whole team is divided into three groups hustlers slackers and easy going people and in each of these groups you already have more than one person and the names of those people are separated by commas so now the total item is the name of the group and the people in the group and this section is separated from the other section by the usage of semicolons in summary what we understand is we generally use a semicolon to separate items in a series that already contain commas now let's do a little exercise to understand what we have learned up to now now let's use commas and semicolons wherever they are needed in these sentences now observe the sentences carefully Helen left her desk unlocked at work consequently she worried about it all night the menu included broiled fish steamed broccoli grilled potatoes spinach and bread but for, but for some reason they served no dessert Tej hurried through his work however he still wasn't finished by 8:30 the bus traveled through Baroda Gujarat Mumbai Maharashtra Hyderabad Telangana and Vizag Andhra Pradesh I have been at this for 2 days I need to get away for a while now let's try to insert commas and semicolons in the needed places in these sentences let's start with the first one Helen left her desk unlocked at work consequently she worried about it all night now we have a conjunctive adverb here consequently that means uh, the first clause should be separated from the second clause by the usage of a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and after the conjunctive adverb see consequently we put the comma the menu included broiled fish steamed broccoli grilled potatoes spinach and bread but for some reason they serve no dessert now again here we find <clears throat> different items in a sentence and a series of sentence now so and because the menu and and uh, we have a conjunctive adverb for some reason even though we have a conjunction but the first clause contains many commas in its in it so to distinguish the first clause from the second clause though it has a conjunction but we use the semicolon Tej hurried through his work. Again, we have a conjuncting conjunctive adverb, however, so we insert a semicolon after the first clause. Now the bus traveled through Baroda, Gujarat, Mumbai, Maharashtra, Hyderabad, Telangana. Now here we find that there are a series of items, and again the items themselves contain commas, like Baroda of Gujarat state, Mumbai of Maharashtra state. So hence. to separate this uh, group of items like baroda gujarat from mumbai maharashtra we have to use semicolons so you have comma after baroda and semicolon after the state and so on i have been at this for two days i need to get away for a while now here we have just two independent clauses and there is no conjunction inside them so to divide them or to separate them we use a semicolon now let's go to columns now columns they introduce a series or a list 
we use a colon to introduce a list of items. For example, these people were transferred, Audrey, Brett, Bradley and Lindsay. Now here we find that there is a list of people who were transferred, the four people in that group. But to start the list of items or to introduce that list of items, we use the colon. We ordered the following supplies, paper, staplers, scissors, markers and tape. Now there is a series of items in this list and to introduce that list, we generally use the colon. We also use a colon to introduce a formal quotation. Nietzsche offered this sound advice, smash not the happy delusions of men. Now before the starting of a quotation, we have inserted the colon. So colon is introduced to uh, is used to introduce a formal quotation. We also use a colon to introduce a word, a phrase or a clause that adds particular emphasis to the main body of the sentence. For example, your busy work schedule is the result of just one thing, poor planning. Now before giving the answer to uh, answer as the reason for the busyness of somebody's schedule, a colon is introduced. So the after the, co the colon actually seeks the attention of the reader and tells them that what follows is of very of, of great importance. We use colons to show relationships. For example, we use columns between two independent clauses when the second explains the first. Jenny shouted and turned cartwheels. She had just finished the last page of the report. Now, there are two clauses here and we are not using a semicolon but we are using a colon. When we use a semicolon, it is actually like two clauses and they are uh, separated or in a sense they are set off by the use of a semicolon. But in this particular case, the second clause is actually explaining why the first one has happened. So in that particular case, we use a colon after the first clause. Bridge framed the paycheck. It was the first check he had ever earned. Why did Bridge have a frame about of, of, of his first check? Because it was the first check he had ever received or ever earned. Sindhu ignored the doorbell. She knew it was a salesman. She had no time for it. Why did Sindhu ignore the doorbell? Because she knew it was a salesman and she had no time for it. So the second clause is explaining the first and to show that relationship, we use columns. We also use columns between the title and the subtitle of a book. For example, measurement, translating into metric. Now the title of the book is measurement and the subtitle of the book is translating into metric. So in order to um, separate this title and subtitle of a book, we use columns. Here we find that uh, dear Miss Isha, now we are using a colon that means we are telling her that this is a business matter to be taken seriously. Dear editor, however, you can observe that the closing of the letter sincerely yours or cordially yours is always followed by a comma and not a colon. Now let's do an exercise. Now let us try to use columns wherever needed in this group of sentences. Now let's do them one by one. Hammond located the procedure in the policy manual volume 689. Now because it's a volume and we're talking about 
the book number and then the page number so we have to introduce a colon after the book number six The hail destroyed all of wheat. However, the corn was untouched by the violent storm. Now here we find that we have a conjunctive adverb, however. So after the first clause, we use a semicolon to separate it from the rest of the sentence. Dear customer, your order should arrive on or before January 5, 2006. Sincerely yours. Now here we, we find that uh, the the first uh, uh, greeting dear customer it consists of a colon because uh, it is to tell the customer that this is purely business communication each day a new shift begins at 8 30 a.m 4 30 p.m and 12 30 a.m now after each times denotation we are using a comma but in between the denote the denotation of time that is 8.30, we are using a colon to talk about hours and minutes. Now let's do another exercise uh, by adding uh, commas, semicolons and colons wherever they are needed. Your budget is gone. You need to stop spending money. In this case, your budget is gone. You need to stop spending money. Both of them are two independent clauses are, and they are joined without a conjunction. So we use a semicolon to separate each of the clauses. The results of the tests were inconclusive. Therefore, the group decided to gather more information. Here, there are two clauses and they are separated by a conjunctive adverb. So a comma follows the conjunctive adverb, whereas a semicolon precedes the conjunctive adverb. The charter trip trial includes stops in Pune, Maharashtra, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh, Shimla, Himachal Pradesh. Now we have like uh, a group of items consisting of a city and the name of the state together. So and this together part is separated using semicolons. And in each part we have a comma which separates the city from the state these items are essential for fishing now when you are saying that these items are essential for fishing fishing you are starting a list of items so th to introduce the list we use a colon and then each item is separated by using a comma at 12 23 pm the book standing on the edge a closer look at mountain climbing goes on sale now we have to insert columns at two places one is uh, to distinguish between hours and minutes and the other is uh, to distinguish between the main title and the subtitle of the book the book standing on the edge colon and then follows the subtitle okay now we have looked into the important usage of colon and semicolon now let's turn to another uh, punctuation mark which is to use to talk about a break or uh, a change in the meaning of a sentence it's called the dash a dash is a specialized punctuation mark reserved for only a few types of situation however Many times we use it incorrectly, just like the semicolon. Dashes call attention to themselves. So we need to use them very sparingly. And they are very effective if they are used correctly. But they lose their impact if they are overused. A dash can function like a comma or a bracket or a parenthesis or colon. But creating subtly different effects in each case. We use dashes in place of a comma. The dashes have a slightly more emphatic feel, making the reader focus on the information that is set us inside the special marks. We use a dash to mark a sudden break in thought or to insert a comment, comment in a sentence. Now look at these examples. Take these files and this. Look out for the truck. Now, we suddenly find that there is a break in thought 
and a new comment is inserted look out for that truck now that should be preceded by a dash because the dash says that there is a break in thought i remember the day what te what teenager doesn't that the space shuttle exploded now we have two dashes here i remember the day and suddenly he there is a break in thought what teenager doesn't and again there is a break in thought that the space shuttle exploded so actually it's something like i remember the day that the space shuttle exploded but there is a comment inserted in between what teenager doesn't and to distinguish this comment we use dash before and after it abby is delighted about a new job and because there is a insertion of a comment as we are so that comment is preceded and succeeded by the usage of dash we use the dash to emphasize explanatory material uh, we don't have to use a dash but we can use it for example realizing your limitations time money and energy makes planning more realistic so there is an explanatory material what re what limitations do we need to realize about the time money and energy so to uh, emphasize them we use dashes he lit a cigarette inside the building an unconscious habit now an unconscious habit is like an explanatory material of what he what action he did we use a dash to connect a beginning phrase to the rest of the sentence for example diversity and challenge these are the advantages of a new programming now this the beginning phrase is uh, is actually made to connect with the rest of the sentence using a dash so let's do an exercise to understand the usage of dashes let's look at them carefully and try to insert dashes wherever needed to run or to hide those were her only choices now to run or to hide and that's like an explanatory uh, material and that has to be separated um, and this introductory remark has to be separated from the rest of the sentence and we do that by using a dash our idea just in case you are interested is to remove the plastic coating now we find here that just in case you are interested is an additional comment that is being made in the course of the sentence so that is uh, actually set off by use of dash Mr. Odia is the most unreasonable. I should keep my opinions to myself. No, actually, because um, uh, I should keep my opinion to myself is an aside or is a particular comment that is being made. So, to distinguish it, we use a dash in between the first part of the sentence. I can never find his uh, the pocket organizer when he, oh, no, I got it. Now here we find that uh, when we find some something incomplete, um, so we use a dash to identify that incomplete part of the sentence and also to to talk about the additional comment which is inserted in the in writing the sentence. Intelligence, perseverance, and luck. That's what you will need for this job. So these three words or phrases or the introductory part of the comment of the sentence and they are connected with the rest of the sentence by the usage of a finally let's do these two ex little exercise and complete mariana is disappointed we are too that the performance was cancelled we find here that Mariana is disappointed and we are too disappointed that the performance was cancelled. Now this additional break in thought or insertion of a comment we are too uh, is actually set off by the use of dash. Preparation and hard work. These are the keys to successfully implementing a plan. Now preparation and hard work are like a beginning phrase to the rest of the sentence and to connect them we use a dash right so 
we have come to the end of this video and in conclusion let's remember what we have learned we have learned how to use a semicolon a colon and a dash while writing English sentences now semicolons main purpose is to distinguish two independent clauses it is also used to separate items that already contain commas a colon's basic purpose is to introduce a list and there are many other purposes of columns where we use to separate books and titles chapters and verses title of the book with the subtitle uh, hours and minutes in, in notations of time and so on and dash's uh, primary purpose is to separate a sudden comment or a sudden insertion of a comment or uh, a break in thought by a comment in a sentence it is also used to connect a beginning phrase or an explanatory phrase to the rest of the sentence so for any queries or questions on this topic of uh, understanding the colon cousins or the dashes please uh, um, log on to a blog post or send a mail or even um, write call us on the number given thank you and have a good day